Hey everybody, to experience real transformation with the Enneagram, you need to apply its wisdom to your life. The problem is most people read about their number and then hope for the best instead of taking practical steps to improve their lives on a daily basis. So if you're tired of making the same self-defeating mistakes over and over again, or if you feel stuck on your journey of personal and spiritual growth, I want you to do this. I want you to join me for my upcoming free webinar, Growing with the Enneagram, Five Practical Ways to Use the Enneagram for Personal and Spiritual Growth. This is going to be fantastic. It's going to take place on Wednesday, December 16th at 7 p.m. Central Time. To sign up, you need to visit typologyinstitute.com forward slash webinar. That's T-Y-P-O-L-O-G-Y-I-N-S-T-I. I-T-U-T-E dot com backslash webinar, W-E-B-I-N-A-R. I can't wait to be with you on it. It's going to be a fantastic time. So don't forget, webinar, December 16th at 7 p.m. Go to typologyinstitute.com slash webinar to sign up now. Hey, folks, and welcome to Typology, the show in which we explore the mystery of the human personality through the lens of the Enneagram. My name is Anthony Skinner. I'm the producer of the show. We are so happy to have you here, and you are back for another great one. This is part two of our two-part series with Leanne and Michelle, the hilarious duo known for their comedy skits and crazy numbers on YouTube. So if you've caught the uh, first episode you are looking forward to this one if you've not heard the first episode go back and listen to that one and then come back to this one because you're in for a treat they are hilarious and uh they do so much with the enneagram it's really really fun and super informative so without any further ado let's pick up midstream on this interview with leanna michelle and your host ian cron i've never really thought of this But a great exercise, and I'm going to write this down somewhere, a great exercise on a retreat weekend that I lead or a workshop is to challenge people over the course of nine days to try and be all nine types. Mm. Like, in other words, just to get, just, okay, today I'm going to try to live in the shoes of a two or a seven and just see how it goes. You know what I mean? Mm. Like the other eight types. And you actually have had the experience of having to research and get into other people's shoes in a way that other people just observe other types. But to say, today, I'm actually going to try to be that type and experience the world the way that they do, Mm -hmm. that would be really powerful. Michelle and I will come to your retreat and we'll do a little improv seminar and everyone can do open scene work as the different types. Yes, we actually... I love it. We want to do an improv live show where we are in a scene together improvising and then a director tells us, okay, go to seven. And then we automatically have to switch oh. our character to the next Enneagram mm-hmm. number and, and go back oh, and forth. We're workshopping it. Can, like, can I be, be? Can, no, no, no. I want to be the director. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Yes. Oh. Put me on a plane. I'm coming. <laughs> okay. I don't have a SAG card, That's but okay. I want... Okay, I just want to be the director. I won't okay. get, I mean, I won't be interruptive. I'll just call out. Yes. You just tell me what to do. Perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, done. I, I, Hired. You know, I mean, I'm totally in. Awesome. Love it. Done and done. I want to be the director. Let's work on it. You know, I appreciate what you both said about how the Enneagram has affected your life in very, very practical ways, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I just finished a course last week. It's called True You, a deeper exploration of your Enneagram type mm-hmm. and um, what I've done that's made it different. Like, there's a lot of great courses out there, and they cover all nine types, right? And but you you have to do them in brief because otherwise the course would be a million hours, right? right. So what I did is I I decided I was going to break up, um, sort of nine ninety minute course modules, if you will, so that people could say like you, Leon, could say, okay, I'm just buying the four mm-hmm. one. Because I want to do 90 minutes on my instincts, subtypes, passions, virtue. I don't. I, I love the other numbers, but I've already studied them. I want to go into a deep dive on mine. Yeah. Or I want to get the four and the eight because I want to know mm-hmm. m- more, you know, uh, about Michelle, and that would be helpful. You, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, mm-hmm. you know, and you, so you don't have to do all nine numbers, right? And one of the things I learned in 15 hours in front of a camera. Oh. 
um, was again just the power of this this transformational tool. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I I've been doing this a long time, and I'm like, wow, like this information, which hopefully leads to transformation, mm-hmm. um, is really not only just accessible there there's something about it that empowers people to manifest the highest expression of who they are mm-hmm. if they use it yes. right um, mm. amen yeah. you know yeah. and to draw it out in other people mm-hmm. yeah. you know to draw out the highest expression of others i was going to say to you too leanne um i uh, when you were talking about getting up here in your head as a four yeah Right. And by the way, this is for eights, nines, ones, right, whatever. Um, the same person who I was talking about earlier that I had lunch with yesterday and gives me the most wonderful advice. Um, because I start um, making movies in my head. Mm-hmm. This is what in Enneagram language we call for fours is called introjection. Yes. Mm-hmm. So sixes, their defense mechanism is projection. And so for us, it's introjection, which is actually taking on all the negative feelings Mm -hmm. and thoughts uh, and responsibility for what we perceive is a situation that we've just walked into or, you know, whatever it is. Um, And he always says to me, you need to give up the old idea that you know what just happened. Mm. Mm. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that a great line? Yes. In acting, we call because that the moment before. Like, what happened right before the scene started? And if you don't know that, it's so hard to inform the first couple of seconds of the play or of the film. Yes, that's so good. I love that. Yes. But in real life, people say things, do things um, that we, in a nanosecond, and it's just evolution, really, we just interpret like we we just interpret immediately through our lens mm-hmm. what that meant, right? Yeah. When, you know what? The guy was riding my tail on the highway, not because he's a bully. It's because his wife's having a baby. Right. Like I have no idea. And it's allowed me to do, to practice another principle, which is great for all numbers, which is don't take anything personally. And that's just like for, for eights, <laughs> Like That's eights, easy. man. It's like you think you're being screwed when you're not being screwed. You know what I mean? Like, and and, and you just decide, okay, I just got to go on offense here. You you just actually had a reaction when I said, don't take anything personally. What 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 was going on? Well, there? I think I I don't I. It's hard for me. I, I oh, sorry, <laughs> stumbling over my words. I am rarely offended. I. I, I actually don't um, take things personally very often. And may, maybe that's because I spent so, so many years um, as a television journalist. Um, so I got used to negative feedback and then now on the internet, you know, all the comments and stuff. Um, maybe it's just that I've taught myself to not take things personally. But um, for me, it's more the defense or the offense comes from um, seeing an injustice. Um, if, if it's perceived, mm-hmm. if it's coming my way or to someone else, that's when that's when the mama bear comes out. Mm. Um, but but as far as personally, I bring it on, say whatever you want. I'm, I'm just, it's not gonna affect me. Hey, Anthony. Hey, Ian. You know I've been working on my latest book, right? I uh, sure do. Well, Part of my process is researching topics related to my content. Okay. But as you can imagine, there are tons of resources out there. So let me tell you about one of my ultimate life hacks. Tell us all about it. It's called Blinkist. If you haven't heard of it, Blinkist takes the best need to know information from thousands of nonfiction books and condenses them down into just 15 minutes that you can read or listen to. I like Blinkist because it quickly gives me the main points of a book, which helps me evaluate which books I want to make time to read in full later and which ones to prioritize now for the projects I'm working on. And since Blinkist works on my phone, my tablet, or in a web browser, I use it anywhere, whether I'm traveling, making breakfast, working out, you name it. I've listened to and highly recommend Daniel Nettles' book, Personality, and Michelle Obama's book, Becoming. I love both of them. 
You can even read or listen to the key takeaways from The Road Back to You by yours truly. Everybody needs that book. With Blinkist, you get unlimited access to read or listen to a massive library of condensed nonfiction books. All the books you want and all for one low price. Now check this out. Right now, for a limited time, Blinkist has a special offer just for our Typology audience. Go to Blinkist.com slash Typology, try it free for seven days, and save 25% off your new subscription. That's Blinkist, spelled B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T, Blinkist.com slash typology, that's T-Y-P-O-L-O-G-Y, to start your free seven-day trial. And you'll also save 25% off, but only when you sign up at Blinkist.com slash typology. You know what, can I just tell you something? I'm, you know, older than you guys, and I was saying this to someone the other day, I still have a pretty thin skin. Like it, like just to be honest, yeah. you know, if someone, if someone said to me, you know, uh, uh, do you know that picture of Lee Harvey Oswald when he says it's terrible, when he's being shot, yes. you know what I mean? By, you know, and he's like, yeah. and he's like the cop, the guy, you see the gun and stuff. I'm like, you have no idea. Like when people really go at me, that's what it feels like. Mm, you, you know what I mean? And like shame is really always right on the surface it's like you just have to prick it and it's like you know propulsive bleeding you know from wherever you happen to of shame you know Mm -hmm. and i've learned to kind of go oh there goes that storyline i gotta drop you know drop the plot man but and i can get out of it fairly quickly but my reflex is shame Mm -hmm. you know what i mean i wish i had more of that eight energy where it's like you know like great you know uh whatever you whatever you think that's not a big deal Leanne, do you have that same response? You, are you pretty thin skinned? Yes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent cool, Uncle Ian. But let me tell you something. <laughs> I I have a really helpful question that I think you might love, and I am not daring mm. to suggest that I have anything to teach you. But I I have started asking myself because it's exactly what you said. Shame is it's just always there, and all I have to do is just boop, and it's like heavy on my shoulders, right? Yes. So the question I start asking it first, I like to sort of. I almost like to personify it like, oh, there you are. Like, you're not me. You're your own kind of thing. And then like, stop it for a second. Stop it in its tracks. I'm reading a book called Finding Quiet. And one of the questions that it tells you to ask is, what would be a more helpful emotion instead? And it starts to Mm. reroute those old grooves in your brain that want to take you to like shame station. And instead I'll be like, oh wow, look at what God carried you through there. Look at who God taught you to be through those mistakes. Look at the wife God taught you to become and the friend you're learning to become. And then all of a sudden I have grace and compassion because we don't, as fours, we don't talk to ourselves the way we talk to our friends, right? We talk to ourselves like we are, we're the chief of the chief of the chief of sinners and everyone else is like, oh, you're learning, you're stumbling along. It's okay, there's forgiveness, there's grace. So asking myself, what's a better, what's a better, more helpful emotion? And then trying to lead myself to that has actually been a very helpful tool recently, like last couple of weeks recently. Mm. Yeah, I I think that's so beautifully said. And thank you for teaching that to me. You're welcome. Wow. Um, Aunt Leanne, thank you so much Aunt for Leanne. teaching me that. <laughs> She's going to be Michelle, bragging about this anger. for weeks, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, anger. Uh, anger mm-hmm. management. Yes. That's a thing. What does that look like? We, we've just told you about shame management. What's anger management yeah. look like for you? Like when you when it comes, what do you do with it? Uh, well, I yell. <laughs> 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 um, you know what's interesting about anger? So um, when I was in high school, my dad and mom, I'm an only child, noticed I had an anger situation brewing. <laughs> okay. It was just, we didn't know the Enneagram back then, but that I right. had a short fuse, as we'd say, or short mm-hmm. temper. And my dad also has a short temper. So he actually, once a week during high school, would take me out to breakfast before school, and we did a Bible study on the issue of anger. And I learned that anger is a natural emotion and is is fine to feel angry. It's okay to feel angry. It's what you do with your anger, right, that mm-hmm. causes problems. So that's been ingrained in me from an early age um, at a very pivotal time, I think, when I was deciding who I was going to be and how I was going to act around other people. So now that I understand the Enneagram and I know I'm a gut, 
I react from my gut and sometimes that comes across short and angry. I, I have to, like you guys have to live with shame. I have to live with that. And I know that my anger can be just and good in certain situations, but it can be very damaging in other situations. So I, I still have that short fuse. That anger is right there brimming beneath the surface. And as an eight, I'm right. not afraid to show it. Whereas my nine husband will never show it. <laughs> he doesn't have to. Mm-hmm. And so I just have right. to learn that, you know, is this a moment that's worth bringing that out or can I just let it go for now? And sometimes that means walking out of the room. Mm. Sometimes it means literally biting my lips. Um, you know, it, and so it's just a conscious thing as I get healthier and learn more about myself and get to practice this every day. Mm. It, it's just a matter of, of kind of swallowing it. But I think mm. I've gotten better over the years. Oh my gosh. I was just thinking as you were talking, an area where I see this loudly in you is your mothering. You have become mm. so much more gentle mm-hmm. with your kids. And I see it like yeah. every oh time. Gosh, you're gonna make me cry. I know. <laughs> I'm going to make me cry too, but I really do see it. That's yeah. one and area you know, I That's, um, sorry, we're going to get uh, kind of mushy here Please. for a second. I, you're right. And I do, um, uh, you know, as, as I, when my kids were younger, I remember thinking, it's okay if I get angry because they're young and they're not going to remember. <laughs> I remember thinking, if I go in the other room and I scream, and they hear me, well, they're two. They're not going to remember when they're two. But as they get older, I'm thinking, oh, this is going to have more of an impact. And I do have a short fuse and kind of short patience when it comes to them. And um, and I have to be more conscious. But also, um, my friendship with Leanne and how she is with her kids, she is so willing to just drop whatever she's doing if they interrupt and bend down to their level and see what it is that's that they want to show her or want to see. And right. I'm just like, get out. I told you I'm doing something. Get out of the room. But, you know, she meets her kids where they're at and they're, she's so gentle and kind with them and, and seeing that so often, cause we spend a lot of time together and our kids are all best friends. So we spend mm-hmm. a lot of time with all of our kids in the same space. Um, it's really taught me to calm down and kind of tap into that patience that I have needed. Mm. So that's been a huge yeah. thing that I've learned as well. Oh, thank you. I meant a lot you. to hear that. Well, because your virtue is innocence. Right. And so the transformational journey for eights, right, is from lust to innocence. And I mm. I I like the mm, idea that, that of describing innocence as open heartedness without cynicism. Mm. So it's almost like because you know, eights kind of have this natural suspicion that everybody's probably hiding some ulterior motive. Course, you know what I mean? Yes. And you got to be on guard because they're going to screw you, you know, and there's this, you know, in a way, like eight children, I think, lose for whatever reason, right. hardwiring or hardwiring plus trauma, little t, mm-hmm. which can be complex trauma, which is multiple experiences that add up over time. Yeah. That the world is not a safe place. Right. That, uh, you know, um, people uh, are either in control or they're controlled. Right. And I am not going to be one of the controlled nope. ones. Nope, nope, right? nope. Right? So, you know, I think that journey of learning to deal with anger, mm-hmm. with this kind of, um, how would I say it? Well, you guys will know this. Um, what was it? Nikos Kazantzakis's character, Zorba the Greek, you know, this kind of gusto for life yes. that just spills over the banks of the river you know (laughs) and just learning to channel it correctly but also just to open the heart to this kind of innocent um trust Mm. that a little kid has knowing that mom is over by the swings while you're in the sandbox and everything's going to be okay you know like you you don't have to be defending yourself and getting right you know just Mm -hmm. this kind of openness and so it sounds like you've made progress on that journey i think i have yeah and and Leanne, for you, m- moving from envy to equanimity, mm-hmm. when you were describing what you do when you're pricked by shame, I think is a great example of health for a four. And and have you guys read the work of Byron Katie at all? No. So she's an interesting woman. Um, she, she has a series of questions that um, she asks that I recommend to everybody. Uh, but particularly for fours, okay. but it's great for it's great for every type. Um, you know, we all know that our thoughts, desires, and fears 
um, when they're living in the unconscious. And I would, I would define unconscious as everything you don't know about yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just that, this would make it simple. It's everything you don't know about yourself. Uh, others might know it about you, but you know, everything you don't know about yourself. Um, these things are just swimming around in there and they rule our lives from the shadows. You, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. without our knowing it. They make decisions that are not in our best interest without our knowing about it, hmm. you, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so these, this, when you get these thoughts, she, she says, okay, go through these questions. Number one, let's say you have the thought, I'm a crappy mother. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had that thought? Oh, gosh. on a daily basis. Yes. <laughs> okay, so you stop and ask the first question, which is, is it true? Now that's actually a very powerful question because people rarely inter interrogate their own thoughts. Right. Right? It's like, right. Mm -hmm. we, just, we just think them, and since we thought them, they must be true. It's like, what are you, crazy? Right. Like, can you imagine if you could take your thoughts and put them into someone else's body and walk down the street with them and listen to them talk to you? Like, with your thought stream, you would be like, this person's crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, the things they're saying. Yep. So the first one would be, is it true? Right? Then the next one is, can you absolutely know it's true? So it's almost like, am mm. I a crappy mom? Uh, can you absolutely know that's true? Right. No, I, no, chances are no. And then the third question is, how do you react or what happens when you believe that thought? Oh, I feel ashamed. I get cranky. I get angry. I retreat to my room or I go on the attack or, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You just kind of go, okay, whenever I have this thought, this is what happens, mm -hmm. right? And then the last question is, who would you be without that thought? Hmm. Wow. That's good. Aren't those it's great? A good example it's too, disarming. especially for moms, because any mom listening, mm -hmm. we know that's a daily conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Did I make a wrong choice today? do that wrong mm -hmm. and i'm the worst oh, mom yeah. in the world and all those thoughts yeah mm -hmm. absolutely that's byron katie you said yeah byron katie okay. there are four great questions i've used them in a different iteration of my own that called snap which is a little bit more geared toward the enneagram but i just love those questions yeah. because it's like if you're self-reflective enough and you have enough power of self-observation which you should get from the enneagram self-knowledge, yes. self-observation. You can stop yourself when you feel the feeling of anger coming up, when you feel envy coming up. Like I can feel envy when it's arising, you, you know, in my body. Like it, I know where it lives in my body. Mm -hmm. I can literally stop and say to myself, all right, what am I thinking right now? You know, oh, I'm thinking they have 40 million hits on their you know, their YouTube channel. Why don't I have 40 million hits on my YouTube <laughs> channel? I, you, do you know what I'm saying? Like, and becomes up, yeah. and then I go, I'm a really crap. I'm a I'm a failure at this job, you, right? And then I go, all right, is that true? And then I go, well, it feels true. I, okay, well, that wasn't the question. The the question was, is it true? And then I go, well, maybe not. Can you absolutely know it's true? You, you know what I'm saying? I just run myself through that thing. Yes. Snaps can snap me right out of a bad space. Hey friends, a few months ago, I told you about Thistle Farms, an incredible organization helping women survivors of trafficking, prostitution, and addiction. And the way they employ survivors while also funding their mission is by selling beautiful lotions, candles, and essential oils that are handmade by the women in their program. They also provide products made by women survivors around the world, textiles, tea, jewelry, and more. I got to spend some time with the women of Thistle Farms back in January in an all-day Enneagram workshop, and it was a blast. They love the Enneagram so much, in fact, that they've made an Enneagram gift guide. Now listen, I know the founder of Thistle Farms really well, Becca Stevens. She's been a guest on our show before. And I love what they're doing to make the world a more beautiful place. And so I encourage you to go to Thistle Farms, T-H-I-S-T-L-E farms.org and buy these incredible lotions and products that they have. They are amazing and Oh my gosh, you ought to see how it changes these women's lives. Use the code TYPOLOGY for 15% off at thistlefarms.org. I 
about I, that. The question, is that true, just like dropped, kicked me in my feels when you said it. Like, I could see how that question mm -hmm. would be so helpful in so many areas mm -hmm. of life. Seriously, because when you ask someone, is that true? You put that to them. How hard yes. it becomes right. so hard for that person to maintain a facade of any kind with you any right. longer, right? right. That could be true. Right. Like my daughter comes out of the bathroom. Did you wash your hands? Yep. Is that true? <laughs> like it works in parenting. It probably works in marriage. It probably, it probably works in every category of life. But of course then it would work with the self, right? Of course it would. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't think I've totally. ever asked myself that question of my thoughts before. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's brilliant. Uh, it is. It, and it's so obvious. That's the thing, right? It's like, yeah. Why, why have I never thought to do that? Okay, we got to wrap up. I okay. want to ask you two, maybe just a couple more questions. The first one is, what Enneagram type have you loved uh, performing or riffing on <laughs> on your YouTube channel? I know your What's answer. What's been your Go favorite? First. Do you know my answer? Yeah. Oh, that's going to be the seven, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I... I have said this so many times, but if, if I could pick my Enneagram type from a lineup, I think I would, I would choose the seven every time because I just, all the sevens I know or the seven wings are joyful, uninhibited, fun loving. They're quick to forgive themselves. They're quick to forgive others. Like they're just some of my favorite humans and I love them. And I like playing the seven because she's just unfiltered. Like there's no idea right. that she's not game to try. And so as someone who lives here, very much of the time. I just love the chance to play a character that's totally different than me. How about and you? I love your body language right there because when you go like mm -hmm. this, you're actually showing the stance, you know, the the, the fours withdrawn stance. Yes. You know, like we withdraw. Don't the we seven though? is aggressive and goes, yes. like this. <laughs> she and leans in. I do too. Yeah. I know. She, and I, I so, but, I mean, I'm a self pres four. Are okay. you a social four? I actually haven't, I know there's the three types. I haven't figured out which one I am of those okay, three yet. Private conversation, the three of us, we're gonna do subtypes together. Okay, yes, cool. Okay, okay. It's in, and it's actually in my new course, uh, Instincts and Subtypes for each type. Because, so here's the thing, if you know your type, great picture. Then you go, okay, type with wing. Mm -hmm. Oh, even better picture. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to subtypes and you know your subtype, it's like you go from photo to poster size. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, understanding of your particular type. And for you as a four, it's super important for you to know your subtype. Okay. Because the three subtypes of fours and the three subtypes of sixes are so different from each other mm -hmm. that they might as well be different numbers. Interesting. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, I've noticed okay. that in our YouTube comments on sixes, sixes often talk about their subtypes and why their subtype makes them relate better or worse to my yep. take on the six. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, so you love playing a seven. Mm -hmm. Next. I love playing Michelle? the three. Because she's really excited about um, what people think of her and um, that I don't care what people think of me as an eight. So it's just kind of fun to live in that. Like, I'm going to put this out in the world. What are people going to think? Are they going to like me? I hope they like me. They better like me. And I think eights relate to threes a lot in our yes. drive and entrepreneurship and, you know, striving to be the best. But the thing that I don't have as an eight that the three has is that um, appearances and praise seeking that praise right. and i just think that's so fun right. to kind of put myself in that mindset mm. um to think about that so and then we're also close to the four with the emotions too which is fun so what you just said was really important for people to know um because there are lots of like common mistypes that people misidentify their type so one would be nines and twos it's really hard sometimes to tell the difference between a nine and a two because they're they present in a lot of ways to be the same. Mm -hmm. She struggles. She plays twos and nines, and she struggles yeah. with that. That's so funny with okay. making them separate. Yeah, yep. it can be hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I maybe some of the time I could actually go offline with you and tell you how to do it. Yeah, um, oh to gosh. tell you the difference Please. between a nine and a two. Dreams one of them is, by the way. True. Sorry, sorry. One of the ways it relates to what Michelle just said, which is like twos are in the. Th one of the three most image conscious numbers on the Enneagram. They're very image conscious. Yeah. Nines are not at all image conscious, man. Mm. They are, what you see is what you get people. Mm -hmm. So they just go out in their jeans and their sneakers. There's no sort of like, and they're kind of guileless. Like I always tell people, if you want mm. someone to lie for you in court, don't ask a nine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they've, 
they would be like, bleh, bleh, bleh. Uh, you know, they just don't even know how to lie well. You know? <laughs> My wife cannot lie. I'm married to a nine. Aww. My wife is a terrible liar. I have awesome. needed her to lie for me before, and it <laughs> hasn't it. worked. Systems you know? failing. <laughs> so next question uh, and then we got to scoot. My, but my next question for you is, what number has been like, I mean, I've never asked this question, but what number, this is going to be the diplomatic way of asking the question, do you have the most trouble understanding? That's a, that's a great question. Do, Ooh. I, I will answer that. Yeah. Uh, the six for me is absolutely the really? hardest. And I, I did binge your the 66, sex, 66, 66 right. ladies podcast, which was super helpful. So six years, yes. <laughs> and uh, that was super helpful, but it has taken me a minute or two to get my head around the six for some reason. And part of the problem is mm. we do, some of our research relies on talking to our friends who are those numbers. And I don't think I know a six. I know a couple people with a wing, six wing, but I, they haven't identified themselves to me any, at least. Um, so I've really struggled with the six and the, the ongoing joke in the beginning was disaster, a, preparedness and planning for Armageddon and stockpiling things. That just kind of was my go-to joke. And then they didn't like that. <laughs> show. So I, and I've gotten better for sure with the six, but that, that's been the hardest one for me to get my head around. So do you mm. mean the hardest one to understand like on paper reading the book or the hardest one to be in relationship with? Cause I can't get behind your eyes as readily. Like I understand about I you, but I actually don't care. Like, like it could just okay. be, uh, yeah. Either or, like what number that you've had to perform has been the hardest, you know? You d you mentioned nine and two. The nine. Um, yeah, the, the, nine. the nine. Because I don't want her to be milk toast. because nines are not. They are, they are still waters that run very, very deep. They are incredibly opinionated. Things do matter to them, but they've learned to be deferential in certain categories in order to maintain that harmonious environment. So I think I have a harder time, A, keeping my nine distinct from the two, but also getting that across. That's that latent anger sometimes, you know, uh, the passive aggression. So I'm, I've gotten closer to a nine this year and she is helping me a lot because she She's just let she lets me ask her questions all the time. So she's been a really good resource for me. Hey, everybody. One of the lessons I've learned over the years is that not everybody benefits from a traditional 50 minute counseling session. And this is why some people can go to couples therapy or personal counseling for a long time and never really get anywhere. This is why I'm such a believer of intensive counseling and my friends at Restoring the Soul in Colorado, created by my longtime friend Michael Cusick to help couples or individuals experience deep change and have day blocks over one or two weeks. Now listen, if you can't wait months or years to get to the bottom of an issue or to experience breakthrough, you need to get in touch with my friend Michael and his extraordinary team of counselors at Restoring the Soul. If you're looking to get out of the rut you're in but can't wait months or years, call Restoring the Soul today for a free consultation with Michael's staff. Call 303-932-9777 and learn how their intensive counseling process can help you. As a special bonus, just for Typology listeners, make sure to visit www.restoringthesoul.com slash typology to download their PDF called Five Ways Unaddressed Trauma May Be Derailing Your Relationships. Okay, so I don't know if I should tell this story and we may edit it out. Okay. <laughs> But I want to give tea. you, uh, this is a client I had years and years and years ago who was a nine. I mean, the ninest nine I have ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. And she had a husband who was an aggressive uh, one and a very unhealthy one on the Enneagram. Okay. Maybe, maybe pathologically unhealthy. Mm -hmm. It's one of the very few clients, one of three clients I've had in my life who when she said, do you think I should get divorced? I, I said, I can't tell you whether or not you should get divorced. But if I were you, I would get divorced. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is, oh, is going to end for poorly hell. for so many people unless mm, you get mm. divorced. Right. Like, it's just going to be terrible, you know? Yeah. But I said to her one time, I said, well, he, he treats you so badly. I mean, like, just the things he says to you are so cutting. And as a nine, 
I mean, she would just take it. Mm -hmm. You you know what I mean? Like she would not defend herself. And I said, well, how do you deal with the anger? And she got really quiet for a second. And she said, every morning after he goes to work, I take his toothbrush and I clean the rim of the toilet with it. (laughs) No way. No I love her. Passive aggressive. <laughs> you talk about Pat. There it is, friend. Ladies and gentlemen, passive aggressive. There it was. I, that uh, will definitely make it into one of our videos. Yeah, see absolutely. If, I was going to say, see if you can work that yeah, in. Sure. <laughs> Please. Okay. Uh, we could do this forever. I was very serious when I said a couple of things. Number one, I want to be the judge. I won't be offended if I'm not the judge, but I will be envious of whoever it is who becomes the judge. <laughs> You're the Number judge. two, uh, I would be happy uh, offline to talk with you about subtypes. Yeah. Because okay. because for both of you, if you knew you, about what subtypes were and how they functioned, it mm-hmm. would really change the way you approached. It would like um, yes. make your the different types that you portray more three dimensional. Awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean. It, it would go. It would move away, not that you stereotype, but people typically, Do. it's it's hard not to stereotype and you could move more toward typing mm-hmm. than okay. stereotyping because okay. okay. it just fleshes out some things in a really cool way, mm-hmm. right? Um, you have a new podcast coming out. I want everyone to know about it. It launches oh this gosh. fall. Tell us about it. Oh, okay. I can't believe you're mentioning this. Okay, so we, we haven't even announced this yet, but we are launching a podcast Uh, It's called Leanne and Michelle Think They're Funny. Mm -hmm. And um, all of our episodes are just going to be really short, um, under 30 minutes. Our mission in life and through what we do is to bring joy to people and make them laugh. So our podcast is simply going to be silly and fun and a little break from reality. Um, And we're going to be talking about things um, that we think we know about. That's right. We just want to be like a little dopamine hit while you're on the treadmill. Like Mm -hmm. nothing more, nothing less, you know? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yep. Okay, that launches this fall, yeah. right? Yep, yep. Okay, sure. tell people about your YouTube channel, where they read, hear about you, your your website, blah, 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 so they know everything you're doing. Okay. Everything. Uh, well, Leanna Michelle, is it? that's everywhere, and uh, Leanne is L-E-E-A-N-N and Michelle, and you can find us on YouTube, um, where we drop Enneagram videos um, about once a week, and then Instagram, Facebook, LeannaMichelle.com. Mm-hmm. And soon wherever you listen to podcasts. And then a shout wow. out to your studio again. Yes. Yeah, please. The uh, acting at, studio. Thank you so much. At Deering Studio. This is where we cut our teeth as improvisers. Like really, Matt, my husband, in addition to the fact that he's just dreamy, he's also an amazing and gifted acting coach. Um, and there are virtual acting classes. So if you're listening across the country and you are curious about improv or getting started as an actor, at Deering Studio on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all the places. Mm-hmm. And, and he has my a heck last... of an Irish accent. Yes, yeah, an and Irish an Irish accent. accent. Yeah. Delicious. <laughs> because no matter what an Irish person says, it, they make you love them. I now, the other thing I was selling. just going to say, that's right. I, I would uh, also like to say in closing that I officially want to be on one of your YouTube uh, videos, not for no other reason except it would make me special <laughs> and unique. Yes, so, it would. <laughs> um, Done. Guys, thank you so much for being on the show. What, what? I mean, this was just a blast. I knew it was going to be a blast, but I didn't know it was going to be this blasting. Aww, thank nice. you for having us. We really loved being here. We are still starstruck and can't believe this happened. So thank you Well, so much. I am starstruck too, and I admire both of you. And I mean that not in a corny, fake, podcasty way. <laughs> uh, what you're doing is beautiful. I love the idea mm-hmm. that you have this simple but very deep which is like how usually things work out goal of just wanting to bring joy to the world Mm -hmm. um that's a that's a that's a pretty great goal you know so peace out we love you thanks will you come (laughs) on again oh Oh, anytime uncle ian we're just gonna wait right here in this zoom waiting room till you come back (laughs) we're not leaving (laughs) (laughs) well order out might be a week (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All Thank right, we'll so talk much. to you soon. Okay, bye, bye guys.